Hi everybody, I'm Nathan Chan. I'm the Managing Director of Proud Fertility, which is a surrogacy and egg donation consultancy in Canada. So I hear I have somebody here with me today. Um, well, are you a surrogate, an egg donor, an intended parent? I am a surrogate who is 28 weeks pregnant. Ooh, 28 weeks pregnant. Can we see your belly? <laughs> Baby, brewing. It doesn't look that big. Everybody tells me I don't look that pregnant, and I sure feel a little that pregnant. Oh, yeah? So you're 28 weeks pregnant. So tell us a little bit about how it's been going so far. Who are you um, carrying a baby for? Um, the pregnancy has been great. My intended parents is are a gay couple in Canada. They're amazing. Um, and, yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. It's been a different pregnancy from my first two. So I have a 3-year-old and a 12-year-old. And uh, this little one has been quite different, um, but just as much fun. At 28 weeks, um, you know it's a boy or girl, right? We do. What is that? We find out it's a boy. Oh, okay. And you have two? I have two boys. I, okay. make, I make boys. Yeah. Okay. So what inspired you to be a surrogate, for, first of all? Um, when I had my oldest 12 years ago, I knew the day I had him that surrogacy would always be a part of my journey. And um, it just came up recently, within the last year and a half, that it was the perfect timing. And so that's when I reached out to Proud Fertility. And we just connected. And um, it just all happened perfectly organically. And so that's how it all came Okay. Out. So we're going to jump into, into the topic that you wanted to really talk about today. Because you have some things to get off your chest. So, um... Yeah, I guess a lot of people, like, we just went out for dim sum today. We did, my first dim sum. And I guess someone said, um, oh, you're just going to give this baby away. And, and then we just started having a chat about this. So what, what, what do you have to say about that? Just, you're giving this baby away. Like, how can you do that? You're giving a baby away. <laughs> Um, I would have to say that that is the first question that comes up um, when it comes to surrogacy is how are you going to give the baby away? And right from the beginning, the baby has never been mine to keep. I am growing this human um, to build a family, which I think is unbelievably um, magical and it's been a super humbling journey. But I that is that is the thing I struggle with the most is people just don't understand that for me from day one it has never been about me having this baby or me taking this baby home it's about growing a family so I know deep within my soul that it's never going to be a problem for me to watch these amazing men grow their family and it's because of my body that I've been able to help them really do that so I, I know that... Um, th Has this been hard for you when people kind of... Do they say it in a more like questioning way or a curious way or is it more like they're very much judging? There, there's definitely some judging points and times where people just don't have faith in um, what I know about my body and where I'm at. And I'm confident. Um, it takes this. a very special person to be a gestational surrogate. So for those of you who are watching, gestational surrogacy is... This, this baby you're carrying is not genetically linked to you. Mm -hmm. So the gay men who are um, in need of you to carry a baby for them are not using your eggs, right? Correct. So, and that's a totally different kind of surrogacy. And so I, I want to really drive on that point that this is, you're not just giving away. Like you said that you're intentionally creating this baby. Mm -hmm. um, I like to say that uh, my body's been a vessel for this baby to grow. My body has... Um, been able to nourish this little one and bring everything it needs to come into on onto earth side really and um, yeah. Is that kind of offensive or to say that your body is just this vessel like I <laughs> We chatted about that quite quickly before but no, that's just my body is I think it's amazing that my body is able to do this um, I've read um, I've seen some onesies that say created through miracle and science. It blows my mind what we're able to do in science nowadays, but it is just beautiful what a woman's body can do. Um, but no, I'm, I'm proud to say my body's been a vessel for this little one. Okay. So tell us a little bit about um, the most exciting moments of your journey. Um, the most exciting moment was the day that we found out we were pregnant. Um, it... Like, I can feel my voice cracking. <laughs> it was, it was amazing. Um, it was probably, it was the best part of our journey was just 
knowing that these um, amazing men are finally getting what they wanted their whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was it was pretty pretty great day. What does it mean by knowing you're pregnant? For those of you who are joining us, like they obviously didn't do it in the traditional natural insemination way. I hope not. <laughs> um, but you went to an IVF clinic, mm -hmm. and you ha how did you get your body ready for that? Um, so there is a screening process. So I went out um, to a clinic. To yeah. a clinic, yeah. and they just. Pro went through my body and um, did some ultrasounds and just made sure that my body was able to have a baby. Um, and because I had had two successful births before, that was um, a good starting point. And then... How are you with the needles? And I don't like needles. Mm -hmm. um, that was a struggle for me. But I, I opted actually to do daily injections. So I had to do daily injections for, I believe it was 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. And that was tough. Um, Where do you put them? In your tummy or your um, bum? You can do in your thighs, in your arms, or on your bum. And I, the, the clinic and I decided it was best to do my bum. My, my bum. Okay. So you did injections. Did you have someone to help you or you just daily injections yourself? There was times where I had someone who was able to assist. And then um, it, towards the end, I was doing them on my own. Okay. So anyways, fast forward. Um... Did you go to this embryo transfer by yourself with a friend or? Um, so I went with a girlfriend that I was with at the time. She came to support me and yeah, so that was nice to have someone there with me okay. for sure. Did you have more than one transfer, two transfers, five transfers? Our first transfer was done in June and um, that the transfer didn't take. Um, so baby wasn't ready to make an entrance into mm -hmm. the world quite yet. Uh, was that hard for you? You know, it was, um, it was saddening. It was a tough, um, it was hard to hear, but it was, we, I, I went in knowing that whatever happens through the whole process is meant to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, so I knew going into the second transfer that if it took, it was meant to take and he is meant to be here. And if we, if it wasn't successful, then no, it just wasn't meant to be. Um, so we had the second transfer done three months post after the mm -hmm. first one. Taking some time to recover, yeah. kind of ish. And then the second embryo transfer just took. It did. Okay, and that was the exciting moment you were talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So looking forward, um, you're 28 weeks pregnant now. Let's just say you actually have a full 40 weeks. Like, what's your biggest fear and how, how, what are you looking forward to, really? Um, I'm going into, my biggest fear I'd say is going into this labor and I really would like to do it naturally. Um, I have a pretty great idea as to what that's going to look like and my intended parents are super supportive. They're really allowing me to drive um, the journey itself. But my biggest fear I think is the pain and needing... Because um, you're definitely glowing now. Thank but you. when you're near the end, you just kind of want to finish, right? And, uh, yes. Yeah, so make sure we don't <laughs> get you on Facebook Live. Were your two previous births also as a gestational care or was one for a child we were raising? So someone's asking, um, you how many kids do you have yourself? And then is this your first surrogacy, I guess? So I have two children of my own, um, three and 12. And then this is my first surrogacy journey. Okay, interesting. So yeah, um, I don't know what else we can really, I guess one, one big question is why, why did you want to do this really? Like, do you, would you do it again or what are some things that you want to redo? Um, I, like I said, with Trish, when I had my youngest or my oldest, sorry, I just knew within that day that I was going to be a surrogate having a child is a different kind of love. And my, the thought that. There are people on earth that just don't have the ability to bring in life and broke my heart. And that's what made me decide that this is how I need to give back when I'm on my time here. Um, and so that's that's why I did it. I forget what your second question was. Um, I don't know. I don't remember half the things that come <laughs> in my mouth anyways. <clears throat> you know, while we just um, expand on that, what were you looking for in an intended parent when you were choosing? Did you look at more than one profile? Did you, what, what stuck out for you? Um, my, it, it was really important for me to, um, my first journey in the event that there was going to be more, be a gay couple. Um, so that was really where my focus was. Okay. Um, which was great that I had connected 
with proud fertility. Proud. Um, and so that was one thing that I really looked for. It was, I was hoping to have someone local, but my exact words were to you, local where they're able to possibly attend um, mm -hmm. appointments, but I don't want them showing up at my house on Sunday for dinner. Like Monday, dinner. Definitely... Monday dinner is fine. <laughs> Why not Sunday? <laughs> I, I want to be able to have my space um, during the pregnancy, but I also want to have um, the inclusion of the parents to whatever level fits best for them and for me. And um, we've been really, I've been really blessed that we have found a beautiful common ground. Mm -hmm. And yours happened to be local in terms of like Canadian. Mm -hmm. And there are, like you would have been fine with a, a couple that was not from Canada mm -hmm. who would make these efforts to come and have that time too, right? So Definitely. There were some, there was a couple other profiles that really stuck out. Mm -hmm. um, and they, I have no idea who they are. They it's been a while. They weren't <laughs> Canadian. Um, um, but the, I just loved what was presented to me in them, um, both via the, what they had to write and what, um, pictures and everything that was important mm -hmm. to them in their life. So they attended, what do you mean? They attended some of these, um, appointments with you? Yes. Yeah, so at my 20 week, my, um, parents were able, my intended parents were able to come down and they were able to come to our 20 week OB appointment, which was amazing. They were there to hear, uh, the baby's heartbeat. They were there to, um, ask the doctor all the questions that they had. Although one of them has read everything about birthing and pregnancy, so there wasn't too many questions to ask. Um, and then we were able to go to a larger city center and we had our 20 week ultrasound done. And then we also were We posted able... that, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> we posted that last Did week. Did you? Right? Yeah, your 5D ultrasound video. No, yeah, it was a 5D. 5D. Um, and then, yeah, we did the 5D. So that was really great to witness them seeing their baby on the screen. That made it all worth um, it. That, that right there um, is why I'm doing what I'm doing, is, is the look that they're so truly madly and wildly in love with this little human already. Um, cool. It was amazing. Do you want to keep in touch with them? You know what, we have, um, that was one thing that was important to me and it was important to them that we're able to maintain some form of relationship. So we went in there knowing that this is what we both want to bring. And um, so yeah, I will be in the baby's life um, as auntie or, we're not yeah. too sure yet, we're still figuring that out. Last thing, for people out there considering to be a surrogate, do you have any words for them Just, uh, at all? Um, I would strongly suggest getting in contact with Nathan. I'm not saying that because I'm sitting here with you, but I think it is, um, it has been an amazing and magical journey and it is something that we are as women able to do. Um, if it's something that sits in your heart and, and you were saying that at lunch today, like you can't, like my job is just to really support people and I'm not convincing people to be a surrogate. No. It takes a very special woman to be a surrogate. And um, I think if you have to convince yourself, it's it's definitely not the journey for you um, because it, it, it's, there's a it's lot. It's a calling, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are things that you need to figure out, like are there any support systems and we enable that to make it happen for you. But you don't really do this for any particular like financial reward no. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So you do it because for the love of it, really. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. What about two intended parents out there? I know you have a lot of messages for them too. Um, don't give up. There's so many um, amazing opportunities and women out there that are wanting to to do a journey with you. And um, I wish you all the best Aww, luck. Thank and you so much. It's, yeah, thank it's, you. It's thank you for great. doing this Facebook Live. And I hope you guys enjoyed um, in your insight. And I can't wait to... Um, Make sure your family, a family dream is complete as well too with mm -hmm. these two amazing individuals. Thanks.